We here at the Movie Ticket Radio Podcast salute all the YouTubers who do all their videos because, you know, I found out this is a lot of work. Hi, I'm J.R. Russ, and we're posting our podcasts here now just for more people to find and hear them. But, you know, John Landecker and I are pretty much radio guys. In fact, folks have said that we have faces for radio. That means no pictures, no video, no graphics, just this. So sit back and enjoy the oral experience, spelled A-U-R-A-L. That means sound, not what you're probably thinking. Movie Ticket Radio. Welcome to the Movie Ticket Radio podcast, the companion to the streaming audio movie hits format, movieticketradio.com. I'm your charming and delightful host, J.R. Russ, and with me, Hall of Fame broadcaster, John Records Landecker. And John, what are we going to be talking about today? Gross Point Blank. That's right. Yeah. Do you know why it's named that? Oh, of course I do. Gross Point is a very affluent suburb of Detroit, and uh, the character played by John Cusack is an assassin, and he goes back to Gross Point to kill somebody and finds out that it's his high school reunion. Mm-hmm. And his name is Martin Blank. Exactly. So there you go. You got that play on words, Gross Point or Point Blank. Indeed. Mm. Mm. And 1997 was the movie. John Cusack likes a lot of songs in the movie. His sister Joan also in it and Minnie Driver. And also somebody named Ann Cusack. Oh, that's a, yes, another sister. Yeah. And also Jeremy Piven. From Chicago, uh, an acting family. In fact, I don't know if it's still open, but his mother used to run the Piven School of Acting or Dramatic School around here. Oh, really? It is, in fact, still open as piventheater.org, and Jeremy's mother, Joyce, is on the board of directors. So there you go. Yeah. And he also has a podcast that you should check out called How You Livin' with Jeremy Piven. <laughs> I like it. So a very good movie, kind of star-studded. He was. This was a pretty early movie for Jeremy because he was born in 67. But you know, he started getting his chops around Chicagoland and the like. But very good, very interesting. Dan Aykroyd's in it also with a pretty darn funny role. He wants all the assassins to unionize. You know, and I believe there's a radio station in Gross Point Blank, isn't there? That's right. Not? Yeah. The driver plays a DJ at the radio station. Yeah. yeah. Like that had ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I love watching some of the radio portrayals where they don't they put I on know. headphones but they're not really listening. You go, it's not really like that or no. the speakers are still playing in the studio. And they're talking and the VU meters aren't moving. I mean it's all over the place. I know. We're we're just too picky. Uh, we're too uh radio geekish. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. We know too much for our own good, really. Yeah. But a very good, well-done movie, and a lot oh, of yeah. great songs in it, like... I Can See Clearly Now. Johnny Nash. Yes. Uh, he wrote it and performed it. Mm-hmm. And uh, then there was one called Armageddon Time. It's Armageddon Time, it's da, da, Armageddon da, 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 Time. By The Clash. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, uh, The Clash. A, a Coxone Dodd and Willie Williams song. They wrote it. They did. Yeah. And, you know, uh, by the way, we maybe can apologize for two things. What's that? Well, one is we missed last week just due to our very, very busy schedule. <laughs> and second of all, for those of you who did not like the Bondathon and a month's worth of James Bond songs, we're sorry. But there was a lot to do and there was a lot of interest in James Bond music. So we did that. We got off track a little bit. But we're back on moving into uh, just some single or maybe we'll do a, a double feature today depending on how time goes but Indeed. Uh, you know if you didn't like that sorry but if you do like it well maybe we'll do it again sometime okay in fact speaking of double features the clash had two songs in that movie they also had rudy can't fail did he i'm not sure did he fail i guess he can't it, i guess it's he impossible can't. joe strummer strummed along on the guitar and mick yeah. jones writers yeah. there and now this is very interesting to me Live and Let Die. Mm -hmm. It says music by Paul McCartney, lyrics by Linda McCartney? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I guess she wrote, uh, at least helped write it enough to get credit on it. Hmm. And 
you know, I guess they were figuring that maybe Paul might be the one to go first, and they wanted he wanted her to have some songwriting credits. I don't know. Uh, sadly, sadly, it went the other way. Well, she had some talent. Yes, she did. Guns N' Roses performed it in the movie, and then also Adam Fields uh, did a performance of it. Who's too, he? So I don't know. I don't remember <laughs> this. We'll have to watch this movie again. I don't know if he's singing along with the song at the high school dance or what's <laughs> happening there or playing in his car at the stoplight. I, I don't know. <laughs> it is one of those movies, though, that if it comes on and I happen across it, I will watch part or all of it because I like it that much. Yeah. And then there was the song by The Jam called Absolute Beginners, written by Paul Weller, and Pressure Drop by The Specials, written, I'd like, I just picked this one out because it was written by Frederick Hibbert, but he's also known as Toots Hibbert. Toots. So it's hipper to be Toots than Frederick. Good point. Yeah. It's also yeah. hip to be small. Ask you. Or square. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was close. Yeah. And uh, another song by Echo and the Bunny Men. Echo, Echo, Echo. And the Bunny Men, Bunny Men, Men. The Killing Moon, 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 Moon. <laughs> Written by Will Sargent, Ian McCulloch, Les Pattinson, and Pete DeFreitas. Huh. A group effort there by mm -hmm. Echo and the Bunny Men. I'm not sure which one of those four is Echo, but congratulations. <laughs> to all of them. Another interesting one, Monkey Gone to Heaven by the Pixies. <laughs> you know, I don't know that song, but now I've got to look it up. Yeah. M Monkey Gone to Heaven. Oh, you know, uh, the studio band is here. Oh, no. Uh, we could ask for some help. Sure. Ask. Okay, Google, play Monkey Gone to Heaven by the Pixies. Monkey Gone to Heaven by Pixies. Sure. <laughs> Good bass. He's a guy. He's a, guy. He's a monkey. All right, well, I've had enough of that. He got killed by 10 million pounds of sludge from New York and New Jersey. He got killed by 10 million pounds of sludge. Okay, Google, stop. Okay. <laughs> I think... Um, John Cusack likes that kind of music because there's a lot oh, of that stuff in his movies. Definitely. And uh, that was written by Frank Black, but he's known as Black Francis. Like I said, hipper. Yeah. yeah. Well, just like uh, Ace of Spades, mm -hmm. written by Ian Kilmster, known by as Lemmy. <laughs> and Motorhead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Edward Clark, known as Fast Eddie Clark. Mm-hmm. Phil, Filthy Animal Taylor as Philip Taylor. Those Weird. are the motorhead riders of Ace of Spades. Yes. In Between Days, The Cure, Robert Smith, the leader and writer of that song. Mm hmm And The Specials. Oh, right? yeah. And You're Wondering Now. I am. A lot, a lot of these were not big crossover hits, but they were like AAA adult album alternative songs. Gotcha. And, you know, not... Just because a song is in the soundtrack doesn't mean that it is prominently in the soundtrack. But, I mean, it could be in a scene, just a sort of an ambience in the background. It's not necessarily at the forefront. I heard one just the other day that I was watching, and the people got in the car and drove off, and it had, I don't even remember the song, it was something like Rubber Band Man by the Spinners. And it was mm -hmm. just like, dum, 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 and they only played maybe 10 seconds of it as the car drove away. Exactly. They just used it as production music just yeah. to kind of set the tempo of the next scene, but they right. never actually played the whole song. But it appears in there, so it's a movie ticket radio song. Indeed. So the specials you're wondering now, written by Coxon Dodd as Seymour <laughs> Dodd and the uh, I know that you know what? I would have kept Coxon. Yeah. Yeah, more than <laughs> Seymour. <laughs> yeah, any day of the week. Listen, would you rather be Coxone or would you rather be Seymour? Hmm. Seymour Skinner. <laughs> and then Andy and Joey, known as the Scatralites. The Scatralites. Jimmy Reed performed Big Boss Man in the movie, Luther Dixon and Al Smith, writer. And last night, I went to sleep in Detroit City. That's right. Bobby That's Bear. Right. Yeah. Written by M M M M M Mel Tillis and Danny Dill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do not write us that we were making fun of people who stutter. Oh, God, no. But that's what Mel did. I know. And don't write us because we care a lot. We care a lot, yeah. Another song by Faith No More, written by more than four people, so we're not, <laughs> it's taking too long. Right. Now we're getting into a pretty big hit. Uh-huh. 
Take on me. Yep. Take me on. Morton Harkett, Pal Waktar, and Magni Verholman. <laughs> and they kept their names. <laughs> I am butchering these names so badly. That's all right. There. People don't know them anyway. No. Uh, Melly Mel, White Lines. Performed by Melly Mel, yes. Grandmaster Melly Mel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sylvia Robinson and Melly Mel as Melvin Glover, or Glover. So we know his real name now. Yeah, yeah. Another big hit, uh, because this is all based in the 80s, because it, it's 1997, and it's his 10-year class reunion that he, right. when he goes back to Detroit. Right. So Walk Like an Egyptian, very prominent by the Bangles. Bangles, yeah. And Liam Sternberg, a writer right. there. Yeah. David Bowie with Queen, doing Under Pressure. Ripped off by Vanilla Ice. And written by... Sorry, I can't give them all credit for it because Too more bad. than four. Let's, right. All right. Let's just say it's David Bowie and everybody in Queen. Yep. That'll do it. That'll do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there was one by Suxi and the Banshees. I think it's Susie yes. and the Banshees, yep. actually. The Su- X is silent. Known as Susie Sue, uh-huh. plus Budgie and Stephen Severin. A song is called Cities in the Dust. Budgie. <laughs> Is that a, a, a parakeet? In yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Pete Townsend. Let my love open the door. Do, 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 do. I love that song. That's a great tune. And this is a self-titled song performed by Dominatrix. The Dominatrix sleeps tonight. Oh, I ho- I know how that goes. In, in the, the wee- jungle, dee- dee- in the jungle. Dee- 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 yeah. The Dominatrix <laughs> sleeps tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, the next song is Let It Whip. Ooh, a perfect tie-in. Indeed, by the Daz Band. Yeah, that was a pretty big hit. Yeah, Reggie sure. Andrews, Nidu Chancellor, and Stuart Argeberg and Kenneth Lockie wrote the uh, Dominatrix song. Mm-hmm. Mirror in the Bathroom played at a critical point in the movie. Pardon me if I spoil this for anyone who hasn't seen it, but I when, think so. uh, there's a, a critical killing scene up at the, by the lockers upstairs mirror yeah. in the bathroom is playing uh-huh. uh huh a, a group effort in the writing and then when mini driver comes and sees what has happened the pace turns in the movie and it goes from mirror in the bathroom to nana doing 99 love balloons so there's a point where the song actually changes the entire mood of the the scene right which is one of the uh, methods used by some movie makers. Mm-hmm. And John, would you like to tell us who wrote this song? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Come it on, is, you coward! Uh, it's written by Fahrenheit Celsius, <laughs> the famous <laughs> German composer. Ewe Frank and uh, Cog Peterson. Don't even bother. As Joran Uri Frank and Cog Peterson. <laughs> And Carlo Cargis. Uh-huh. Doors of Your Heart by the Beat as English Beat. Mm-hmm. They shortened their name so that it would fit on the on more things. Well, they didn't want to be confused with the uh, German beat or the Japanese beat or the Russian beat. Well, they wanted so, to go worldwide. They didn't indeed. want to be just pigeonholed into being the right. English beat. Right. And uh, Doors of Your Heart. Norca's Novena. I put that in because I, I don't know the song, but the Pogues, pretty famous uh-huh. kind of pretty, AAA. Oh, group. yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shane McGowan, a uh, writer there. And then Blister in the Sun by the Violent Femmes is the closing song as they drive off into the sunset. Indeed. Gordon Gang, writer there. Yeah. And there you have it. The songs in. Gross Point Blank. Yep, yeah, 1997. Very good. All and, right. you know, we're at a really nice. Bite size podcast length here. Sometimes we get really long. We go 20, 25, 30 minutes. And I think this is a nice bite size because okay. I think we're going to be like 15 minutes or there. Well, that's perfect. So let's wrap this and come back next time when with? once again we return and we will do another John Cusack movie with a lot of music in it. High Fidelity. Indeed. So that'll be fun. And well, uh, remember to like and share us and subscribe and and i'm still working on that youtube channel by the way i've got to i got to put that on there's got to be video with it and I, I don't really i don't know how we do it but you somehow i'm sure there's a way to do it where you could just take video of us talking <laughs> <laughs> would you really want to look at that
Not sure. Not quite sure about that. I mean, we could probably zoom it and post it. Yeah. You, know, I, you never I know. Well, I don't know about you, but I definitely have a face for radio. Well, we'd have to think of some dressing it up. So or we could do like the uh, the memes or the well, where they, they do a goofy face that electronically makes you look like somebody else or a cartoon. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Maybe yeah. we could do that. Who I knows? wanted to use the poster pictures but i yeah that's probably copyright so i can't do yeah. that so i don't know we'll have to think about that but if you have any questions or a movie you'd like us to do you want to correct us on something hey go ahead we don't mind we we've got thick skin we've been told worse by many many broadcaster uh general managers oh, and program directors that goes without question so uh you know write us at movie ticket radio at gmail.com check out the stream at movie ticket radio.com enjoy and have a good time, and we'll catch you next time when, once again, the Movie Ticket Radio podcast returns. See you then. I'm J.R. Russ with John Landecker. And we'll see you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, we're out of time. Movie Ticket Radio.